The Charaka Samhita or Compendium of Charaka Sanskrit Karaka Sanhita IAST, Karaka Samhita is a Sanskrit text on Ayurveda Indian traditional medicine. Along with the Susruta Samhita, it is one of the two foundational Hindu texts of this field that have survived from ancient India. The pre-2nd century CE text consists of eight books and 120 chapters. It describes ancient theories on human body, etiology, symptomology and therapeutics for a wide range of diseases. The Charaka Samhita also includes sections on the importance of diet, hygiene, prevention, medical education, the teamwork of a physician, nurse and patient necessary for recovery to health. Topic authorship The Charaka Samhita states that the content of the book was first taught by Atreya, and then subsequently codified by Agnavesa, revised by Charaka, and the manuscripts that survive into the modern era are based on one edited by Dhritabala. Dhritabala stated in the Charaka Samhita that he had to write one third of the book all by himself because this portion of the book had been lost, and that he also re wrote the last part of the book, based on textual analysis, and the literal meaning of the Sanskrit word charak. Chattopadhyay speculated that charak does not refer to one person but multiple people. Vishvakarma and Goswami state that the text exists in many versions and entire chapters are missing in some versions. Topic date Dates of composition of the Charaka Samhita are uncertain. Muhlenfeld's History of Indian Medical Literature dates it to be between 4th century BCE to the 2nd century CE, with Karaka's compilation likely between 100 BCE and 200 CE. The Dirtbala revision and completion, the source of current texts, is dated to the 6th century CE. Topic roots in Sanskrit, Charak is a term for a wanderer, sannyasi ascetic, and sometimes used in the context of the ancient tradition of wandering physicians who brought their medical expertise and magico-religious rites from village to village. Surendranath Dasgupta states that the medical tradition of wandering physicians are traceable to the Atharvaveda, particularly the Karanavadiya Shaka, one of the nine known Shaka of Atharvaveda-based Vedic schools. The name of this school literally means wandering physicians. Their texts have not survived into the modern era, but manuscripts from two competing schools, Pipalada and Sonakya, have. The Atharvaveda contains chapters relating to medicine, surgery, and magico religious rites. This Atharvaveda layer of text was likely compiled contemporaneously with Samaveda and Yajurveda, or about 1200 BCE to 1000 BCE. Dasgupta and other scholars state that the Atreya Karaka school and its texts may have emerged from this older tradition, and he cites a series of Atharvaveda hymns to show that almost all organs and nomenclature found in Karaka Samhita is also found in the Vedic hymns. Topic contents The extant text has eight stana books, totaling 120 chapters. The text includes a table of contents embedded in its verses, stating the names and describing the nature of the eight books, followed by a listing of the 120 chapters. These eight books are Sutra Stana general principles 30 chapters deal with general principles, philosophy, definitions, prevention through healthy living, and the goals of the text. Nidana Stana pathology, eight chapters on causes of diseases. Vimana Stana specific determination, eight chapters contain training of a physician, ethics of medical practice, pathology, diet and nourishment, taste of medicines. Sarira Stana anatomy eight chapters describe embryology and anatomy of a human body with a section on other living beings. Indriya Stana sensory organ-based prognosis twelve chapters elaborate on diagnosis and prognosis, mostly based on sensory response of the patient. Sikitsa Stana therapeutics thirty chapters deal with medicines and treatment of diseases. Kalpa Stana pharmaceutics and toxicology 12 chapters describe pharmacy, the preparation and dosage of medicine, signs of their abuse, and dealing with poisons. Siddhi Stana success in treatment 12 chapters describe signs of cure, hygiene and healthier living, 17 chapters of Sikitsa Stana and complete Kalpa Stana and Siddhi Stana were added later by Dhritabala. The text starts with Sutra Stana which deals with fundamentals and basic principles of Ayurveda practice. Unique scientific contributions credited to the Charaka Samhita include, a rational approach to the causation and cure of disease introduction of objective methods of clinical examination topic Physician, nurse, patient and medicines The text asserts that there are four important parts to medical practice, the patient, the physician, the nurse and the medicines. All four are essential to recovery and return to health, states the text. The physician provides knowledge and coordinates the treatment, he is who can explore the dark interior of the body with the lamp of knowledge, according to the text and Valiathan's translation. 
The physician must express joy and cheer towards those who can respond to treatment, masterfully avoid and save time in cases where the patient suffers from incurable disease, while compassionate towards all. The nurse must be knowledgeable, skilled at preparing formulations and dosage, sympathetic towards everyone and clean. The patient is responsible for being positive, have the ability to describe how he or she feels, remember and respectfully follow the physician instructions. The Charaka Samhita, states Curtin, was among the earliest texts that set a code of ethics on physicians and nurses, attributing moral as well as scientific authority to the healer. The text, in chapters 8 and 9 of the Vimanasthana, dedicates numerous verses to discussing the code. It mandates that the physician must seek consent before entering a patient's quarters, must be accompanied by a male member of the family if he is attending a woman or minor, must inform and gain consent from patient or the guardians if the patient is a minor, must never resort to extortion for his service, never involve himself in any other activities with the patient or patient's family such as negotiating loans, arranging marriage, buying or selling property, speak with soft words and never use cruel words, only do what is calculated to do good to the patient, and maintain the patient's privacy, there is no end in the knowledge of medical science, claims verse 3.8.12 of the Charaka Samhita, and the physician must constantly learn and devote himself to it. The text asserts that a physician should discuss his findings and questions with other physicians because when one discusses with another that is possessed of a knowledge of the same science, such discussion leads to increase of knowledge and happiness. The verses that follow outline that discussions can be hostile or peaceful, the former are unproductive, the latter useful, even if one faces hostile criticism, one must persuade with gentle words and manner, asserts the text. Topic religious ideas The Charaka Samhita, like many ancient Hindu literature, reveres and attributes Hindu gods as the ultimate source of its knowledge. The Charaka Samhita mentions Bharadvaja learning from God Indra, after pleading that Poor health was disrupting the ability of human beings from pursuing their spiritual journey. And then Indra provides both the method and specifics of medical knowledge. The method, asserts the text, revolves around three principles etiology, symptomology, and therapeutics. Thus, states Glucklick, the text presumes proper goals to include both spiritual and physical health. The Charaka Samhita, in addition to initial recitations, uses the foundational assumptions and values embedded in various layers of the Vedas. These assumptions include the Vedic doctrine that a human being is a microcosmic replica of the universe, and the ancient Hindu theory of six elements five prakriti and one Brahman, three humors vayu, pitta, kapha, three gunas sattva, rajas and tamas as constituent forces innate in a human body, and others. The Charaka Samhita is premised on the Hindu assumption that Atman soul exists, it is immutable, and thereafter the text defines physical and mental diseases as caused by a lack of correlation and imbalance in body, or mind, or both, because of external factors prakriti, objects of senses, age or a want of correlation appropriate harmony, equilibrium between the three humors or the three gunas. The Sushruta Samhita and Karaka Samhita have religious ideas throughout, states Stephen Engler, who then concludes. Vedic elements are too central to be discounted as marginal. These ideas appear, for example, in the theoretical foundations and Vedic metaphors used in these texts. In addition, states Engler, the text includes another layer of ideas, where empirical rational ideas flourish in competition or cooperation with religious ideas, as well as the evidence of later editions of some Brahmanic ideas. There is a close relationship between the philosophic presuppositions and the approach to medicine in Charaka Samhita. Topic. Nutrition and diet Charaka Samhita dedicates chapters 5, 6, 25, 26 and 27 to Aharatattva dietetics, stating that wholesome diet is essential for good health and to prevent diseases, while unwholesome food is an important cause of diseases. The text suggests that foods are source of heat, nutritive value as well as physiological substances that act like drugs inside human body. Furthermore, along with medicine, Karaka Samhita in chapters 26 and 27, states that proper nutrition is essential for expedient recovery from sickness or surgery. Topic. Meat for dietetics and medicine 
The Charaka Samhita suggests a regimen of mamsa rasa meat soup during pregnancy from sixth month onwards. Freshly cut meat is also recommended by the text for treatment of poison, wherein the cut meat is pressed against the affected part or spot of insect or reptile bite to absorb away the poison. Ray et al. list medicinal substances from over 150 animal origins that are described in Charaka Samhita, and the chapters these are found in. These range from meat of wild animals such as fox and crocodile, to that of freshly cut fish, fish oil, eggs of birds, bees wax. Additionally, the text describes hundreds of formulations gruel it asserts to be of medicinal value from a mixtures of animal products and herb or plant products, as well as inert minerals such as various salts, soots and alkalis. Ancient pharmacy Numerous chapters in the Charaka Samhita are dedicated to identifying and classifying seeds, roots, flowers, fruits, stems, aromatic leaves, barks of different trees, plants' juices, mountain herbs, animal products ranging from their milk to their excretory waste after the animals eat certain diet or grasses, different types of honey, stones, salts and others. The text also describes numerous recipes, detailing how a particular formulation should be prepared. A typical recipe appears in the Chikitsastana book of the Charaka Samhita as follows A new tela recipe The text, thereafter, asserts that this a new tela is to be used as a rubbing oil and as nasal drop for a certain class of ailments. Glucklik mentions other medical texts from ancient India which include the use of a new tela in skin therapy. Topic. Sexual health The Charaka Samhita discusses sexual diseases as well as its theory of treatment of sexual dysfunctions and virility The text emphasizes methods of body cleansing, sexual health promoting conduct, behavior and diet. Certain herb and mineral combinations are part of its regimen. The text asserts that obesity and a lifestyle lacking exercise is linked to sexual dysfunctions, dedicating many verses on it. The text, states Arnold, contains great number of verses relating to women's sexual health, suggesting great antiquity of certain methods and therapeutic agents used in the treatment of gynecological cases. For example, the cautery, pessaries, and astringent washes. Topic: <laughs> Medical education. Chapter 8 of the Charaka Samhita's Vimanastana book includes a section for the student aiming to become a physician. The text asserts that any intelligent man who knows the challenge and patience necessary to become a physician must first decide his guru teacher and the books he must study. The Charaka Samhita claims, according to Kavaratna and Sharma translation, that "...diverse treatises on medicine are in circulation." and the student must select one by reputed scholar known for his wisdom, is free from tautology, ascribed to a rishi, well compiled and has basia commentaries, which treats nothing but the professed subject, is devoid of slangs and unfamiliar words, explain its inferences, is non-contradictory, and is well illustrated. The teacher for apprenticeship should be one who has knows the field, has experience gained from successfully treating diseases, who is compassionate towards who approach him, who lives a life of inner and outer shacha, is well equipped, who knows the characteristics Characteristics of health and disease, one who is without malice towards anyone, is free of anger, who respects privacy and pain of his patients, is willing to teach, and is a good communicator. When one finds such a teacher, asserts the Charaka Samhita, the student must revere the teacher like a deity or one's own father because it is from his grace that one gets educated. When the teacher accepts a student as his apprentice, asserts the Charaka Samhita, he should in the presence of fire initiate the student with the following mandates during the period of apprenticeship. Thou shalt be a brahmacharya, wear beard and moustache, thou shalt be always truthful, abstain from meat and unclean diet, never harbour envy, never bear weapons, thou shalt do anything I say except if that may lead to another person's death or to great harm or to a sin, thou shalt behave like my son, never be impatient, always be attentive, behave with humility, act after reflection, and always seek whether sitting or standing the good of all living creatures. Topic. Commentaries The most celebrated commentary on this text is the Karakatatpariyataka, commentary on the meaning of the Karaka, or the Ayurveda Dipika, the lamp to Ayurveda, written by Kakrapanidatta 1066. 
Other notable commentaries are Bhattaraka Harachandra's Karakanyasa c. 4th, 6th century, Jejjada's Nirantarapadavyakya c. Shivadasa Sena's Karakatatvapradipika c. Among the more recent commentaries are Narasimha Kaviraja's Karakatatvaprakasa and Gangadhara Kavaratna's Jalpakalpataru the earliest scholarly basya review commentary in Sanskrit may be of Bhadar Harachandra's Karakanyasa on the redaction by Dhritabala. Two manuscripts of this basya have survived into the modern era and currently stored as number 9290 in Asiatic Society of Kolkata and number 13092 manuscript at the Government East Library, Chennai. Topic: <laughs> Comparison with Sushruta Samhita. The Charaka Samhita is among the most important ancient medical treatises. It is one of the foundational texts of the medical tradition in India, alongside the Susruta Samhita, the Bila Samhita, and the medical portions of the Bauer manuscript. The Charaka Samhita is the oldest known Hindu text on Ayurveda, life sciences, and it was followed by the Susruta Samhita. Except for some topics and their emphasis, both discuss many similar subjects such as general principles, pathology, diagnosis, anatomy, sensorial prognosis, therapeutics, pharmaceutics and toxicology. The Sushruta and Charaka texts differ in one major aspect, with Sushruta Samhita providing the foundation of surgery, while Charaka Samhita being primarily a foundation of medicine. A source for socio-cultural and ecological history of ancient India. Bhavana and Srivatsa suggest that the text is not only an interesting source of ancient medical practices, it may be a source of valuable information on ancient ecological, social, and economic conditions in ancient India. The text describes geography and ethnic groups with words such as Jangala, Anupa, and Sadarana, then lists the trees, vegetables, lakes and rivers, bird life and animals found in these regions. Many of the drugs and potions mentioned, they state, are linked to region of their origin e.g. Magadhi from Magadha and Kashmarya from Kashmir. Ray et al. list the numerous mammals, reptiles, insects, fishes, amphibians, arthropods, and birds, and the respective chapters of Charaka Samhita these are mentioned in. The text also states that the food habits of ancient Indians varied by regions. Mamsa meat was popular with people who lived in Balaka, Pallava, China, Shulika, Yavana, and Shaka. People of Prachya preferred matsya, fish, according to Bhavana and Srivatsa translation. Those living in Sindhu Desha now Gujarat and South Pakistan were habituated to milk, according to Charaka Samhita, while people of Ashmaka and Avantika consumed more oily and sour food. The people of Dakshina Desha South India preferred paya flavors, whereas those of Atara North and Paschima West liked mantha flavors. Residents of Madhya Desha Central India preferred barley, wheat and milk products according to the text. See also Ayurveda Debates in ancient India Mitahara Naturopathy Siddha medicine Sushruta Samhita Soa Rigpa Unani Yoga Homeopathy References Topic. Bibliography Akarya, Yadava Travikrama ed. Maharsina Punarvasanopadista, Tachizianagnavesena Pranita, Karakaterdabalabhyam Pratisamskrta Karakasamita, Srike Krapanita Tavirasateya Ayurvedadipakavyakaya Samvalita Nirnaya Sagara Press, 1941. The best current edition of the Sanskrit text. Often reprinted. Online machine readable transcription available at serrat.info Angler, Stephen 2003. Science versus Religion in Classical Ayurveda. Newman. 54, 416-463. doi, 10.1163, 156 quadrillion 852 trillion 703 billion 322 million 446,679. Kavaratna, Avinash C., Sharma, P. The Charaka Samhita 5 Vols. Sri Saturu Publications. ISBN 81-7030-471-7.
Menon, I. A. and H. F. Haberman, Dermatological Writings of Ancient India Medical History, 1969 October, 13 387–392, seen at the Wellcome Trust Centre for the History of Medicine at University College London 2, June 1, 2006 Munial Ayurveda, Manipal, Sachitra Karaka Samhita, Volume 1, published by Munial Institute of Ayurveda Medical Sciences, Manipal. 2005 3, Muhlenbeld, GJA History of Indian Medical Literature Groningen, 1999-2002, Volume Ia, pp. 7-180, gives a detailed survey of the contents of the Karakasamita and a comprehensive discussion of all historical matters related to the text, its commentators, and its later history in the Islamic world and in Tibet. Muhlenbeld, Jarrett Jan 1999. A History of Indian Medical Literature, Text. Forston. ISBN 978-90-6980-124-7. Sharma, P. V. Karaka Samhita, Agnaves's treatise refined and annotated by Karaka and redacted by Durdabala text with English translation Chaukamba Orientalia, 1981-1994. The best modern English translation of the whole text. Volume 4 gives summaries of the commentary of Kakrapanidatta. Ray, Priyadaranjan, Gupta, Harendra Nath, Roy, Mira 1980. Susruta Samhita A Scientific Synopsis. New Delhi, Insa. Sharma, R. K. and Bhagwan Dash, V. Agnaves's Karaka Samhita text with English translation and critical exposition based on Kakrapani Datta's Ayurveda Dipika Chaukamba Sanskrit Series Office, 1976-2002. Another good English translation of the whole text, with paraphrases of the commentary of Kakrapanidatta. Wujastik, Dominic, The Roots of Ayurveda Penguin Classics, 3rd edition, 2003, pp. 1-50 gives an introduction to the Karakasamita and a modern translation of selected passages. Topic external links English translation of Charaka Samhita, Hathi Trust Archives, 5 volumes Charaka Samhita, online version Ray and Gupta, National Institute of Sciences, India Charak Samhita Original Sanskrit Text Karaka Samhita Sanskrit, IAST Translate, Sarat Initiative, the British Association for South Asian Studies and the British Academy Philosophy and Medicine in Early Classical India 3, Department of South Asian, Tibetan and Buddhist Studies, University of Vienna Devendranath Sen Gupta, Upendranath Sen Gupta, eds. 1897. The Charaka Samhita by Mahamuni Agnibesha, revised by Maharshi Charaka in Sanskrit. Donvantari Machine Press, Calcutta.